Good afternoon, once again. Uh, welcome to episode 951, for those keeping count. And, again, just for the fun of it, because it's been a week since the beginning of the new year, it is, it is January 8th, I'm going to check in with you how your resolutions are doing. Um, if you haven't been watching my broadcast for the last week, this may come as a surprise to you, but if you have been watching them, you know where I'm going to go with this. <laughs> um, simply put, because I was talking to some people last night about this, resolutions really... I just know. And I was on a mastermind call this morning and I mentioned that everyone was like, oh, I love the way you said it. So I'll say it here again, in case you haven't watched my broadcast the last few days, which is resolutions really do suck. That's not what I said, but that's what I'm explaining. Um, if you've been doing, if you if you have, let me say this way. Let me rewind a little bit. So hi, thanks for joining me. Thanks for being at my broadcast. Um, it has been a week since the beginning of the year. So have you applied new resolutions and how have they been doing? Did you start January 1st saying, I'm going to make sure I go to the gym every day, I'm going to make sure I eat healthy, I'm going to give up dairy, I'm going to drive and be polite, I'm all these different things. Have you done any of those things? How did they do? I should say, how did you do with them? Because resolutions tend to fail. And the way I described it, well, no, no, I'll get to that in a moment, I'm jumping ahead of myself. Um, there's... there. I did post a meme last week sometime, I think it was last week, that was a, that basically is a statistic, a statistic, that 92% of all resolutions fail within the first two or three weeks. And that is unfortunately the price that resolution, I mean, resolutions are designed to fail, it seems, because very few people keep them. So if you've got resolutions still running a week later, congratulations, you're ahead of the curve, because that isn't very common. But for most people, maybe you, maybe somebody you know, their resolutions petered out within a few days. Now, it is an interesting thing. Some people have been talking about this because we started the new year midweek. Some people are going, we should have New Year starting on a Monday. It doesn't make sense to do it on the end of the middle of the week. So for some people, the resolutions died simply because the weekend happened right in the first few days. But then again, for some people, resolutions aren't that important. For me personally, resolutions became unimportant because they never did work for me. But frankly and gratefully and thankfully, you have three different words. <laughs> they have actually, I found something better than that. And it starts with a simple thing called intentions. And I said, I've shared this so many times, but I'm doing it one more time because I want you to get this because if you're not taking notes for this and using this, you're going to be limiting your possibilities. And I want to help you have more success. Not just, well, in every area, any area, whatever you focus on. Because the power of intention, as is a book for that title, um, is real and powerful. And the way I've talked about it in the other broadcasts and I shared on the Mastermind call this morning was, and I've said this, because I said this a few times online, is that resolutions really are ego-driven. Resolutions are usually made as a declaration of force of will. Now, I'm going to make this happen and get it done and, and it's going to be great. Unfortunately, most people break that agreement with themselves. In fact, a resolution is a, um, for a lot of people, is, a, is, a, is an agreement put too far out of reach. That's another way of putting it because actually I've got to mm -hmm, this one this one. Let me do this one first. <laughs> As I said, what I've said before is resolutions are an e are ego driven, whereas intentions are spirit infused. And what I mean by that, and simply breaking it down, is because resolution. Uh, let me put it this way: a resolution is a form of agreement. An intention isn't. Interestingly enough, and I've done, I did talk about agreements whew, a few months ago, so I'll give you a quick, quick recap because if you don't understand this piece. Or says if you do understand this piece, it can change your life. Resolutions are a ego position, mental perspective to say, I'm going to get this done, which is making an agreement with yourself to get something done. Straightforward enough. The thing with agreements are that our when our ability to keep on <clears throat> excuse me, our ability to keep or not keep agreements has a direct impact on how we feel about ourselves. In fact, our self-worth, or excuse me, let me rephrase that, our perspe perception of our self-worth, because our worth is always valid, just so you know, as a side effect, <clears throat> side effect of being a spiritual being on a human experience. Okay, I'm going to, I'm diversifying too much, let me focus this back. Hang in there. Who we are as human beings, who, excuse me, who we are as spiritual beings having a human experience is we are worthy, period. There's nothing that can affect that, good, bad, or indifferent. Behaviors, Issues, traumas, challenges, anything that happens to us does not affect our worthiness. We are worthy, period. That's the baseline. Okay, so moving forward from that. 
agreements are things that we make sometimes unconsciously sometimes consciously that will directly impact how we feel about ourselves and what comes out of that is we may not trust our worthiness because the problem is when we don't keep our agreements we lose trust so it's not about worthiness it's about trust just to break that one apart i had to do that for myself so i got that hopefully you did too that was just a shift i had to make so keeping agreements is a way excuse me having agreements because it's not about keeping it's about making the right ones Having agreements is a way to raise your ability to be trustworthy and to be trustable by others and how to trust yourself. The thing with with agreements are that if you make agreements and don't keep them, you tend to violate trust with yourself. You lose trust with yourself. So when you don't keep your resolutions, you're violating agreements with yourself. So resolutions are a sometimes an impossible agreement that you will not keep, but some part of you thinks you, get, that you need to, otherwise you lose trust. So better off not making any resolutions than making ones you can't keep. So first of all, let's get that one clear. And if you're like me, you probably gave up doing resolutions quite a few years ago because they were never working. And I didn't know at the time, now look back, I'm grateful for it, is that by stopping making resolutions I couldn't keep, I no longer violated, violated trust with myself. Because agreements you don't make are agreements you don't have to keep. Simple enough. So that's one piece I want to give you to so understand that piece. So resolutions are tied to agreements because that's what they are. They're, self, they're declar- declarations for ourselves, something we intend to do as an agreement that we're going to make it happen. And then we don't do it, and we wonder why we're a bit depressed. This is why I'm, I've been adamant for the last, well, for a long time, but specific, specifically the last weeks, 10 days, posting memes and in my Facebook Live saying how much I do not recommend the resolutions. If you haven't seen those, definitely scan through my wall for the last like 10 days because there's a lot of posts and memes and reminders and stuff to tell you how ineffective and how dysfunctional resolutions really are. As I said at the beginning, intentions are my recommended alternative to that because when you make an intention, it isn't an agreement, as I said earlier. When you set an intention in motion, it's a directional influence, or excuse me, a directional desire that you want to go in. So you say, so you say for example, uh, my intention is to take better care of myself this this month. Well, that is a very, in one way, bad because it's amorphous, but good because it's a soft choice. That's not like a a, a a a stark outline of something that has to be done. Now, you may have an intention to get a new job this month. The challenge with intentions, or excuse me, the challenge with anything like that is. Yeah, I'm gonna be sure I put the pressure, the right, the emphasis on the right thing. So, say you want to get a new job this month. The challenge with that is you're involving other people. When you involve other people, you have no, you have less control over something. Oh, there's a whole other part. Oh, there's a whole other part to go with that one. Let me stay this one. <laughs> it's funny. This talk I'm really is inspiring. Like 17 other topics. So I'm going to keep it centered. So these scripts aren't. These talks are never scripted. So there's no um, plan of what's coming next. And I'm watching stuff to go. Oh, yeah. I'll talk about that one later. And talk about this one later. And talk about that one later. Okay. Let me stick to the topic at hand. Because <clears throat> I want to give you this point. <laughs> Pair away with the other stuff. So, with the power of intention and being able to declare what you want, intentions are best expressed as a um, a desire to have something happen that only involves you. Because if you have an intention to correct, to be in a magnificent relationship this month or next month, you're putting it out to the universe as something you'd like to have, but the thing is, it may not happen. Because... Relationship with somebody else involves somebody else. That makes sense? Which actually let me back up a second. Actually, let me say it this way, because I did say again that intentions are not agreements. So you can have an intention to be in a relationship this month, but if it doesn't happen, don't stress over it. Because one, you didn't break trust with yourself, you didn't make an agreement to it, you said you'd like it to happen. Because in a way, intentions are cheating. You need to be careful to say that. Intentions in a way are kind of like cheating because when you make an, declare an intention, what you're really doing is you're setting up something as a possibility, not as a definite. Now, that works for you and against you. You can make intentions that are really, really wasting time, which I don't recommend, just so you have something out in the world. If it don't happen, no big deal. However, you can set intentions that are so far beyond your ability to do something because they're not all about you, that they actually be very free. Your intention may be, so for example, one of my intentions this year, as a, as a plan already, is my plan. My intention this year is to speak on um, 
stages of other people's events and audiences. In fact, to be a paid speaker and or, and or make offers from stage for other people at other people's events. Did that make sense? I think it did. Well, the thing is, Saturday, I already had a call from somebody who's looking to put me on stage with somebody else. Now, I had no idea it's going to, I mean, it came out of the blue. I didn't know it was going to happen, but that's the power of intention. So when you said intentions in motion, and as I said, I framed it with include other people, I have no governance control over making it happen. Now, for some people, that's what makes resolutions easier because resolutions are about yourself, which is kind of like, I'd rather do that because I have control. I'd rather trust something bigger than myself, which is why I said intentions are spirit infused, than just do it all myself. There's a lot less work and a lot more freedom and a lot more magic can happen. Oh, this is getting silly. I'm, I'm watching like seven different broadcasts I've done come back to haunt me in a good way. Um, because the magic happens when you stretch outside your comfort zone. That's a talk I've done before. Um, so when you stretch, let me just, I'm sidebarring so many things here. When, <laughs> if, you, if you are feeling that you need to stay inside your comfort zone to feel safe, you've been misinformed. Your comfort zone is where things are comfortable because when you're outside your comfort zone, it's the unknown. The unknown is not necessarily uncomfortable unless you make it that way. But what is actually happening in the unknown is where magic can happen. So I back into the magic. So the power of intention is to put out into the, intent, the universe what you want to intend to happen with a sense of uncertainty, with a sense of unknown, with a sense of possibility of magic. Okay, so we've got trust, agreements, comfort zone already tied together with all this stuff. Okay, so where it's going to go. So understanding this pivot point or this shift point to move from resolution, which is in like which is selfish ego driven got to make it happen false pushing it making it happen versus intention which is expansive opening up to a possibility of what's available that's beyond your scope of understanding ideally it gives you the chance to really open up to possibility now a lot of people i've been hearing 2020 is going to be isn't going to be an amazing year i feel the same way too this is a very powerful year despite appearances in the news just to be clear about that which means that we've got to be willing to expand beyond our comfort zones into the magic. We've got to be willing to set up possibilities of intention that are far beyond what we've done before. Are you willing to try that? Are you willing to explore that? Now, this is only, again, this is the end of this first week of January and the first week of the new year. So I'm inviting you to look at how you've set up this new year. And if you haven't already started putting something in motion, I strongly suggest, I encourage you to think about doing intentions versus resolutions. It is a different approach. It is a shift of paradigm. And frankly, it will feel different as well. And that's the good news. Because you've been pounding resolutions every year for the last 10 years, and they've not been working for you, maybe it's time to flog a different horse. That was a bad metaphor, I make sure you use that one, but still. It's time to do something different. And if you really set yourself up for success by doing intentions, I should say, if you start doing intentions, you set yourself up for success, but the other way around, then you may be very surprised about what happens. As I said, I have some intentions already set up in motion that I'm actually gonna write some more down because they're already starting to show up. Where one I was talking about was, that was speaking on other people's stages and already have an invitation job three days in, that was on Saturday. So I'm telling you, I'm informing you, I'm inviting you, I'm encouraging you to look at intentions as a way to really get what you want. Now, some quick tips, and I, I'm going to tell you now that I talked about this on New Year's Day. I did a much bigger expose, so to speak, on intentions with all the components. So if you want to understand how to do intentions the best, the better way, I won't say the best way, but the better way, watch my broadcast from New Year's Day, which I think was number 944. Yeah, 944, I believe. That talk was about intentions that really sort of broke down how to do it the right way, how to frame it, phrase it, and set up for success. So watch that broadcast. Um, I also did three more broadcasts after that that talks about three other components that make intentions part of a bigger um, focus. Focus of people, yeah. To, to create what you really want. So I'm encouraging if you want to really go deep into this and set up your new year for success, to start with those four broadcasts. So New Year's Day and the three came after that. So it's like 944 to 947. Yeah, so go look at those. I've been adamant about this for a while now, especially this week, because this is the new year. And a lot of people are going to the new year without any desire of setting anything up in motion at all. So if you haven't done resolutions or anything, this will help you. 
you have done resolutions, this is a better reframe to show that you tell me different. Hey, Katie, nice to see you in my broadcast. Um, and the thing I said is that on New Year's Day and then the three days following, I gave you four major keys to set up your life the way you want to have happen for success, rather than doing the resolutions the same old tried and trusted resolutions. I know, Katie, twice in one day. Well, that one, we saw each other. This one, you're seeing me. <laughs> so thank you. Thanks for the love. So first of all, definitely watch those broadcasts. Again, 944 through 947, which is New Year's Day through till Saturday, I think. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Yes, yeah, Saturday. Highly encourage you to watch those because that's four key components that will teach you the things you can do yourself, all free, all for you, so you can just get yourself set up for success this year. On the other hand, or I should say as a PS, as I'm definitely inviting you to check something out I'm offering, there's going to be a link in the comments. Um, yes, definitely. Um, there'll be a link in the comments for my new, um, I've been calling it a masterclass, but it's a group journey. That's the way of putting it, a group journey, sounds fancier. Um, that is basically starting very shortly, which is designed to help you have what you want in all areas of life, set you up for success for this year and beyond. It's basically distilling probably 30 years of my own studies into three months of support. I'll put the link in the comments. It's called BFF, which actually is Balance, Freedom and Flow. You will discover you're your best friend forever. Yes, you already know it. Thank you, Katie. So check it out and have a look. And if you want to jump in, do it. There's two levels you can jump in at one of two levels you can jump in at you choose which one you want and be supported and have the guidance and the into and the insights and the keys to unlock your future in a way that's magnificent that's my offering that's in the comments um and i hope you understand this clarity that resolutions tend to be ego driven and tend to be limiting intentions with what i shared earlier will carry will support you in having um more possibility, more availability of what you want, and also will not violate your self-trust. As I mentioned earlier about trust and resolutions not working together. So I think that pretty much makes my point. Um, I hope you've got some, some value from this. Again, the link will be in the comments. It is barryselby.com forward slash BFF if you want to jump ahead and check it out before I sign off. Um, and I'm looking for some, a few good people who want to join me on this. You know, I'm slowly building the group. We're not starting yet until I have enough people to jump together because it's going to be an awesome journey. And if you have any questions, thoughts about this topic, or have questions about what I shared, please put it below in the comments and I'll respond when I sign off. Um, this is my daily Facebook Live, by the way, if you haven't seen it before. I go live every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time right here on my personal page, and this is number 951, so I've done a bunch of these. So I can tell you where you find the replays. So first of all, on my personal page, which is Barry Silver, you can watch me live every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time. The replays go to my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. Please like my page on Facebook, although Facebook has been nasty, and not, not nasty, has not shown all my broadcasts. It's only had a few of them because that's the way Facebook doesn't seem to show everything. But I do have a backup plan, which is YouTube. So if you go to my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash Barry, excuse me, youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby, you can subscribe to my channel. There's a playlist on there called Messages from the Mask Then, and all my broadcasts are there. This is from newest to oldest. You can search through by keywords or by titles and find the ones that really speak to you. Um, and that will keep you busy. <laughs> that's 950 broadcasts. So that's going to keep you busy for a while. Again, the link will be in the comments for you to check out. I invite you to take a look at it. It will help you shift your paradigm for this year in a way that's going to be magnificent and in harmony with where you want to go. And uh, I think that's about it. I appreciate you watching. And as always, I invite you to please take care of yourself. I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care. Bye.